Retrieval Augmented Generation Introduction Let's first understand the problem we are trying to solve. If we ask this question to a large language model, what is the revenue of a company XYZ this year? We are likely to get a response. Sorry, I do not have this information. Now, although this information may indeed be available in many proprietary or public databases, the LLM does not have it because it has not been trained on it. Here's another question a business user may ask. Did we sell any mountain bikes last quarter? LLM cannot answer this question. It simply does not have this information. Therefore, our goal is to augment LLM so that it can respond with information that it has not yet been trained on. How can we do that? At a high level, here's how large language models are used. User question is sent as a prompt to a LLM and it returns a response. This works well, but with certain limitations. And the limitations are LLM knows only what it has been trained on and has a training cutoff date. Training LLMs continuously on latest real time data is expensive and not always viable. LLMs do not have access to your proprietary or enterprise data. So how do we address this? We can use what is known as retrieval augmented generation technique. Here proprietary data is converted to vector embeddings by an embedding model and stored in a vector database. Based on user question, relevant data is first retrieved from the vector database and then a prompt is created which is made up of the original user question and the retrieved contextual data. This prompt is then sent to LLM to generate a response. With this technique, LLM successfully generates a relevant contextual response using proprietary data. So any data, for example, our proprietary data that we want to refer to should first be saved as vector embeddings in a vector database. A vector database indexes and stores vector embeddings for fast retrieval and similarity search by programs. It is important to understand vector embeddings here, which is how the data is stored in a vector database. Vector embeddings are a type of feature representation of complex high dimensional data in lower dimensional vectors. Our embedding model helps us do this conversion. You can think of vector embeddings as a form of compression, a way of capturing the essence of an object in a format that machine can work with. With respect to languages, embeddings enable us to quantify the semantic similarity between words or sentences, which helps with retrieving the most relevant data for the user question. So by now you would understand that retrieval augmented generation happens in two stages, retrieval and generation. The retrieval stage uses a separate model to search through a database of pre-compiled vector embeddings based on the user query to find most relevant information. The generation stage then takes the original query and the retrieved information and sends it to a LLM to generate a response. To implement RAG, we could use a popular open source framework called Langchain, which has necessary tools and APIs to simplify the process of building such LLM driven applications. It is available as both Python and JavaScript libraries. Langchain essentially acts like an orchestrator, allowing AI developers to combine LLMs with external sources of data and computation. So in this diagram, you can see how Langchain interacts with various entities. Remember that Langchain can do more. For example, use agents to initiate actions. So in conclusion, retrieval augmented generation uses this two step process to generate responses that span a larger context window than traditional large language models. Where could you use this? Imagine using this within your enterprise to answer queries from your enterprise data.